We all know the Tunisian revolution that sparked the Arab, sp the Arab Spring, or do we? Now I'd like to share with you some new ways of looking and rediscovering the Tunisian revolution that we do not see, or sometimes we choose not to see. The Tunisian revolution was supposed to be our tool to democratize our cities and our countries. It was supposed to be that one way that shifts our realities from a dictatorship where different opinions cannot be reflected, respected or accepted, to a new space where freedom of expression exists, where multiple opinions are tolerated, and where it's okay to think differently. And yes, it was. The Tunisian revolution did democratize our societies, because now in Tunisia you can speak freely, differently and artistically. In fact, in Tunisia, artists now play a role as a watchdog over democracy. So if you look, for example, at trap songs in Tunisia, they're not only tackling social and economic issues anymore, but they're also discussing and expressing opinions about political decisions and events going on in the country. And it's not just the freedom of expression that is new in the country. It's also the embracement of multiple different, sometimes even opposing, opinions that is new in the country. Today, in Tunisia, you can speak about everything, anything. You can discuss, defend, or even criticize anything from the use of soft drugs to polygamy, to um, wearing niqab, to LGBT rights, or even to female genital mutilation. Yet, there is one hidden face to this democratizing revolution that we see. With all the pos possibilities that the revolution has offered us to question everything, pretty much everything, it prevented us from questioning that one thing, from criticizing that one thing, <laughs> the revolution itself. You can question religion, you can question sex, the existence of God, political parties, you can question social norms, but you cannot question the revolution or its legitimacy. You cannot doubt the revolution or its achievements. You cannot criticize the revolution or the people who made it. So in summary, the Tunisian revolution, while showing us its democratizing face, was in fact hiding its real face. In the new democratic Tunisia, the revolution is our new dictator. <laughs> so, it's a dictator. It's a dictator because it's sacred. It's a dictator because it's a myth that is not questionable, that is not doubtable. It's a dictator because it's our new myth of this fruit seller who defeats a president, like in this photo where we see the president and the person who defeated it, Bazizi. Uh, the fruit seller. It's a dictator because it's a sacred myth that does not take question marks. And it's a revolution that we are so proud of that we are incapable of externalizing our representation of it. We are so proud of it that it becomes what defines us. It becomes our brand. Look at this picture, for example, from uh, the Ministry of uh, Tourism. Uh, campaign that was made last year. It's using the propaganda around the instability of the country during the revolution to promote the country as um, an initiator of the Arab Spring. So they're using the word ruins here, referring to journalistic reports about the instability of the country during the revolution, to re also refer to the beautiful historic ruins of Carthage. So you see here that the revolution is becoming uh, a regeneration of an identity and of, of a brand, of what it means to be Tunisian. It becomes a, a central thing that defines us as Tunisians, not only to ourselves, but also to others. It becomes that common identity that we share when our personal identities clash. It becomes that common identity that we all share when our religious, cultural, socio-economic different identities clash. So, here is a third hidden face of the revolution. The revolution in Tunisia is also a national burden. Because it is internally an identity reference and an externally uh, commercial brand, it's also something that we feel that we have to talk about all the time. It's something that we have to refer to, honor, speak about all the time. Now, I challenge you, in the last year and a half, ever since January 2011, have you lived one day without hearing the word revolution at least once? If you watch TV, if you talk to your friend, had a conversation, went to a party, watched a movie, if you ha did shopping or uh, just did your homework, whatever you did, shared or lived in Tunisia in the last year and a, and a half, you must have heard the word revolution at least once. In fact, 
by this moment of my TED talk, you must have heard it 17 times. So it is, it is a revolution that is following us wherever we go, whatever we do. It's a revolution that is redefining us. It's a revolution that is so overwhelming that it becomes our time parameter. So we do not only mark events in our life by the cycle of the seasons, but we mark events by whether or not they happened before or after the revolution. Like even our own personal narrative of our own personal biographies are, mic are marked by the revolution date, just like they were marked and started by the date of our birthday. So today, everything in Tunisia depends on the revolution. Not only our representation of ourselves, but even our representation of our space and our time. But even while carrying this burden, this dictator, this commercial brand, the revolution comes as a catalyst for change. Even when politi politi political uh, leaders are forced to talk about it, journalists are supposed to cover it, artists are supposed to sing for it and sing about it, people are carrying it. People feel motivated and empowered to remake it, to reinvent it, to recreate it. Every week there are calls in Tunisia to make massive demonstrations to recall the image of Avenue Habib Bourguiba on the 14th of January 2011. Every day, people in Tunisia feel empowered to build the future of their country. And here comes the most interesting face of the revolution that I'm personally passionate about the most. The revolution in Tunisia has become our source of inspiration. It has become our catalyst for change. Today, in Tunisia, we are offered the space for creativity, the source of inspiration we need for artists to create. We need for people to be mobilized. We need for a civil society to grow. And we see people making together the future of their country. So as a 23 years old Tunisian woman, I look at the future of my country and I think to myself that it's going to be shaped by a dictator, uh, a brand, and a burden. But I'm not worried because I know that it's an inspiring dictator. It's a brand that has a value, and it's a national burden that reunites us all. So, for me, this is after all a meaningful, continuous process that even though it's a burden, a dictator, or a brand, it is trying to make us and push us to do better, to live better, to become better. Thank you very much. Thank you.